Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe, and it's my pleasure to give you a look at what's new in Photoshop Mix for iOS, especially in this case on iPhone. Let's take a look. I've got my iPhone here, and I'm going to go ahead and swipe over to my uh, next screen where I've got Photoshop Mix, and I'm going to go ahead and launch it. Now, I get the new splash screen, which is great. I see my existing projects, which is also great because the projects themselves sync up to Creative Cloud and therefore are available on my iPad or Android or whatever device I'm running Photoshop Mix on. But let's go ahead and create a new project. Uh, now, here's one of the things that's new right off the bat. I get the ability to grab my photos from my phone and my um, camera. That's great, that was there before. Also from my Creative Cloud folder, nothing new there. But uh, Facebook and, and Dropbox also were there, but you notice I now have library. So I have the ability to get images from my Creative Cloud library, which we'll do in just a moment. Let's get the first one from my Creative Cloud folder. And uh, we'll go to assets there. And in my assets folders here, we're gonna go down to my demo folder. And I've got a folder called Photoshop Mix with some images in it. Here's an image I took of in Egypt back in 1990. Let's go ahead and open up that image. That will pull it down from Creative Cloud and put it in a brand new or brand new mix project. Uh, so now you notice the plus sign at the top there allows me to add another layer. So let's go ahead and do that. And this time I am going to grab an image from my Creative Cloud libraries. Now this is great because I can add images to my Creative Cloud libraries from Photoshop or any other Adobe application or from the web, and then they're available for me to use here in Mix. So I'll go to my demo library, and I'll grab this uh, statue here, and I'm going to go ahead and open it, and that will composite it as another layer right on top. Now of course, as a layer, I can move it around, but I think it would look much better, of course, if we cut it out from the original background. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hit the cutout button at the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and zoom up so I can see what I'm doing here. And next, I'll just use my finger, or you can use a stylus, your choice, and just tell Photoshop Mix what I want to keep. So I'm just going to go ahead and start painting right over the statue, right over the base or the, ch or the throne he's sitting on. And we'll just go ahead and get all the legs and other elements we need. And voila. Now, if I, if I need to check the status, because maybe it's hard to see being a black and white on top of the, uh, the color background, I just let go, and that will show me what I've done so far. So if I've missed any, like the part of the face is missing, I can just go ahead and just keep painting uh, with my finger to go ahead and grab that part. And if I grab too much, no worries, I just switch it back to subtract, and I can subtract off the piece that I don't want. Okay, let's get a little closer. That looks great. And I'll subtract off that as well. Okay, so it's looking good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to commit to that by tapping the little check mark at the bottom there. And now, of course, it is still a separate layer. I can still move it around, put it where I want. And I can put it here. But I noticed the problem is that the original pyramid photo was in color and the statue is in black and white. I actually shot this, believe it or not, on film, black and white film back then. Uh, so I want to go ahead and give this some color. So I'll do it with the looks. I'll tap the looks there, and I know there's one at the very end that I like called sepia. So I'll tap sepia, and of course it blends it in just to that layer and gives me just the look I'm looking for. So that's great. I've got the sepia look on that layer. I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. And here's one of the things that's new right off the bat. Before, you were, you were, um, you were left with your two layers, and they were at 100% opacity at all times. Now I can tap that layer one more time on the layer icon at the top, and I can even dial down the opacity. So I can have that blend in kind of a, like a composite or cool background image, or just blend it in to the image on top. Of course, while we're here, you'll notice icons to flip it left and right and up and down. So if you had something that was turned the wrong way, you can easily fix that now. And once you're happy with your level of opacity, you can just go ahead and say OK. Now, two more things I want to do, and it'll give me a chance to show two more features. Uh, one, I want to go ahead and crop this. Cropping's not new, but you have now all the presets for the various sizes and formats that you may want. If you wanted to send this to Instagram, for example, you probably want it to be square. And we have the auto crop um, that will render an auto crop of the asset based on the best composite or best composition. So it's giving me that. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. 
And uh, now last but not least, if I wanted to send this to Instagram, I would tap the share button at the top. That's great. Instagram is down there at the bottom, but there's something new here. Uh, you can save it to your libraries, send it to Photoshop, which is great, so you can keep working on it. All of those things are there, but now there's send to or save to Lightroom. When you do that, it will actually put it in your Lightroom. It'll break, make a new collection called Photoshop Mix, sync it to Lightroom Mobile, and it'll be there on your desktop as a fully composited uh, layered file that you can open up or use in Lightroom any way you see fit. So the save to Lightroom is new. I've already done that. I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you in a few moments here. One last thing before we head over to Lightroom to take a look at it. Let's go back to gallery and let's go ahead and create one more new collection or a new composition, I should say. And we're just gonna use one image this time. We're gonna go back to the library and we're gonna to go to my demo library and we're gonna grab this image of the huts here. Now, Shooting with your smartphone, especially depending on the lighting conditions, could mean you could get some blurry shots. So for example, if we zoom in on this, we can see that that hut is pretty out of focus. Now we have a technology that's on the light or the iPad version of uh, Photoshop Mix that allows me to send this up to Creative Cloud, have it render it with the servers that are running in Creative Cloud to do shake reduction and then bring it back. Well, that has now made its way to the iPhone version. So down at the very bottom, there's a shake reduction icon. It will upload this asset, render it in Creative Cloud, bring down the results, and let me pick the result that I like best. So for example, that's the original. Here's number one, and I always like to look at all three before I decide. Here's number two, and here's number three. Now looking at those, you might look at them and say, well, I kind of like number one or maybe number three, but it's a little too much sharpening, a little too much. So you can now just simply use your finger and dial it back a little bit. So if you don't want it quite to be that sharp, just go ahead and dial it back, tap OK, and that will render your new image that's much sharper and better looking on your phone. So I promised you I'd show you the uh, collection that's in Lightroom. So if we go to our Lightroom, we've got a Photoshop Mix collection and there's the composition that I sent earlier uh, that's here and ready to use. So again, I can use this in uh, Photoshop. I could use it in Lightroom. I could use it as part of my slideshows. I could print it out, do whatever I would normally do with my photos in Lightroom. So not only can I send to Photoshop now, I can also save to Lightroom. And it even creates the collection for me. That's it for what's new in Photoshop Mix in this latest update. And enjoy this with the Creative Cloud uh, 2015 release as well. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one.